Now, we've got a Mantec snorkel here. Uh, it's made in conjunction with Terra Firma. Um, it's based on the original Land Rover design. So when Land Rover first brought out the Discovery 3, um, they commissioned Mantec to design a snorkel for them, um, which they did, which was this item here. And the only difference you'll notice is the logo at the bottom here. So on the bottom of this particular snorkel from Terra Firma, you've got the Mantec logo, and on the Land Rover one, you'd have a Land Rover logo. So that's the only difference. So it's a really top quality bit of kit. Um, it's nice and strong, it's not flimsy. The fitting kit looks fairly substantial, if I'm honest, um, but the instructions are a little bit dubious. So if you're gonna be thinking about getting one of these fitted to your own Discovery 3, this video could be really useful. Now this will fit a Discovery 3 and a Discovery 4, which is why that leads me to the first um, item, and that is the mountain bracket plate. Now one of the things I really like about the Mantec kits is the hardware you get, because it's invariably stainless steel, really finely machined stuff. So these are laser cut mounting brackets. Now you've got two here, and we only need one, and I presume one is for a Disco 3, one's for a Disco 4. Um, the part numbers are AC1 and AC2. Would it be easy if it was AC2 and AC, no, AC3 and AC4, just to make it clear, Discovery 4, Discovery 3, but I'm pretty sure that we need the AC1, um, but I will basically pop it on and have a look. Oh, and also I should mention, we've got this top bracket again, uh, laser cut stainless steel bracket, that's gonna sit at the top and support the top of the um, raised air intake. We have to take this piece off, I believe, so what I might actually do is, while that's off, I'm gonna paint that because I've used some of that uh, ceramic coat on there. Uh, I've used all sorts of things, but I can't bring that black back. Um, so if I'm gonna be putting a snorkel over it, it's gonna look really tatty, so I'm gonna paint that with some Raptor. Um, so let's get stuck in and have a look and see what we've got to play with. I'm pretty sure this grill piece is just pressed in, so I'm gonna use some plastic trim tools just to try and get to the back of it. There we go. So yeah, a couple of clips, two at the top. Oh dear, I've broken that one. And two at the bottom. It's pretty dirty in there, so I'm gonna give that a clean, obviously. Um, try and tidy that up. We have here the AC1 part number, and that just drops in there. Now obviously this is gonna be mounted onto the snorkel itself, but that is how it drops into place. Okay, now if we take the AC2, which I presume is for a Discovery 4, these are in the wrong place. Look, I can't get these to sit over. Now this kit couldn't really be simpler. It's just a two-piece kit. You've got the main body of the snorkel um, and you've got the top. Now what's interesting about this is it doesn't have any front-facing RAM style apertures. So there's no air that's going to be blown into the snorkel and drawn down or raised air intake, I should say. It's all in the back. So I guess they're kind of hoping you're going to get a vortex created around the back of this snorkel top or air raised air intake top. The vortex is going to pull air into it, but it does have these sort of scalloped pieces out the front here, look. And I'm wondering whether and I do like to play with stuff, as you know, I might actually open those up in the future and put some mesh uh, on there because I want to ram some air into the actual uh, intake itself. If I do that, it means I'm going to have to block that off because otherwise air is just going to go in the front and out the back. Um, but it would be quite cool to see what difference it would make. So I could always do a blanking plate for that. That's a whole other video. We won't be doing that today. Um, we're just going to be fitting the two-piece snorkel kit put the gasket in place, it's self-adhesive, goes onto the actual raised air intake uh, pipe work itself, then bolt your clamp on and then we're ready to put it onto the vehicle. So this is the top of the snorkel. We're actually gonna be fitting now the support bracket. Now it only goes one way, so just slide it on and around. I've got the stamp on the actual part itself look there, that's facing upwards. So get it in position. There's two uh, brass threaded inserts. So we're just gonna get our screws into there. I've just prized these open a little tiny bit just because they're not quite grabbing the wing. There. So that is, that's worth doing because if you, if you miss and slide, you're gonna catch your paint. Uh, that doesn't look too bad, but for some reason it's not looking as low down as it could be. So I'm really happy with the position of it and it does clear the door and the bonnet, but 
the bracket for me is looking too high. So on the instructions here, you can see it's asking us to mark uh, the two holes, but in the molding I've got, the holes haven't actually gone all the way through the molding from the front. So we're gonna have to drill those out now. Get your snorkel in position. Make sure your door opens and clears the snorkel, which it does. And then I'm gonna tape it in position, which is what I've done. So I've taped it in position, and that's because we now have to drill our holes. So actually that is resting where it should be, according to the pillar. But this gap's a lot smaller than this gap. So where I want it to sit is there. There, that's the perfect size, look at that. So if you want to know how to do it, get yourself a roll of masking tape, put it above the mirror and the snorkel, and that will give you <laughs> the right gap. And that's what I'm going with. So I'm just gonna mark them because I don't want to go all the way through in case I'm off. Right, so I've got a little bit of uh, wrapped here. I'm just gonna paint the inside of these so they don't rust. So it says here, drill with a seven mil drill bit and then fit your rivnuts. These do not fit. Right, so that really needs to be a nine mil hole. Otherwise it's not gonna set. Right, so we're doing it by the book. Uh, we've got our bonnet open. It's now telling us to remove this plastic trim on the pillar. Um, it's literally just popped on, so. Like that. Yeah. So it's obviously been off before, look. I don't know if you can see that, but it's missing its retaining clip at the top and the bottom and the little spiky bit that's in there. Uh, can fit those clips back in. Interest. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, I guess it does its job. It's pretty grim though, isn't it? So it wants me to drill this hole out as well to uh, position a rivnet, but I'm pretty sure that is not where our bracket's gonna sit, but we'll do as we're told. So it now wants me to put a 16 mil hole in the top. So where we broke, so our little cross there, there's a stud, a cross stud at the top here, and that actually broke off when we were taken off luckily. So um, where that is, I've actually got to put a 16 mil hole. There we are. Right, I really didn't like these clips that uh, I fitted, so I've gone into the parts bin and got some proper heavy duty ones, because I'm pretty sure those are all aftermarket. These look like they'll do the job. Much better. We'll just drop that over the top again. All right, got a little bit of movement for the top. Do you know what it fits? Wow, I was not convinced. So I've actually just undone this again because there was a little plastic spacer washer. It's like a packer tube that sat behind this plastic trim against the uh, the pillar and that just stopped it going too far down, uh, potentially cracking this actual trim, but it just sets it at a nice uh, distance away. So that is how you should do that. So we put our top on now. So I don't want to damage the snorkel body with friction from the drill. So I'm just going to do this by hand. Last little touches, just we've got two blanking plugs for here. One, 
two. Done.